the Bible gives you the Word of God, okay? Uh, divinely inspired by the Holy Spirit for certain people to record and write, okay? And, and, and so what ends up happening is, if you ever go back and you look at why certain books are included in the Bible and why some writings are not included in the Bible, okay? Uh, it becomes interesting. But the other aspect, and, and this is where I had a, uh, someone wrote me th this week and asked me this question, said, why is it that you do not read out of the King James Version of the Bible that we were taught by when we were kids? And I wrote back and I said, because most people have no clue what it says. And he says, well, but yeah, you need the Holy Spirit to teach you. Well, the Holy Spirit can teach me in any language. Okay, it doesn't have to be in the KJV uh, in, in there. And, and the essence of it, it, too, is that in order to understand the Bible, sometimes you also need to understand history. Because when you take history, you understand more about what Jesus was saying, because you got to understand, he was writing to, most of the time, Jewish people at a certain time frame. And when he spoke about certain customs, or spoke in certain ways, it was speaking about a custom. And so they understood it that way. Well, we don't because we don't have those customs. Okay? Except, we still have plenty that sometimes people don't understand. For instance, when a person dies, when do you have their funeral? Usually three days, that's a normal. Usually three days. And, and most of the time they'll do the visitation on the third day, the funeral on the fourth. Do you know why? It was Jesus being in the tomb three days goes along with it. But Jewish custom was that for three days, the spirit of a person lingered. Oh, okay. And so at any point in time, that spirit could go back into that person within those three days. And then they could come back alive. Because some people would just faint. And they would think that they were dead because they didn't know anything about pulses and all this other stuff, you know. And so some people would come back and they say, okay, three days, we know that that's it. That is why Jesus waited till Lazarus had been dead for three days. Because if Jesus had gone there, Lazarus had died, and he had gone there before the three days had expired, and he had raised Lazarus from the dead, they would have said, oh, he wasn't really dead. His spirit was lingering around. And so therefore, you really didn't perform a miracle. So he waited till the fourth day to say, okay, you can't question this miracle. And so sometimes when we're looking at the scriptures and we're reading the scriptures, there's a lot of stuff that you need to look at and see in order to understand. And that's what we're going to do tonight about Peter. Because there's some really neat stuff about Peter that we assume. But I can show you that you can get rid of the assumption based upon what is said through the scriptures. Okay? So we are in Luke chapter 6 which we've kind of done before. Again, uh, verses 12 through 16. It's kind of where we, where we draw from, where we start from, and you'll, you'll see some things. 
Now, during those days, he went out to the mountain to pray, spent all night in prayer to God. When daylight came, he summoned his disciples and he chose 12 of them. He also named them apostles. Simon, whom he also named Peter, Andrew, his brother, James and John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon called the Zealot, Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. So tonight we're going to talk about number one. So have you ever heard somebody use the expression, boy, that person is a sure piece of work? That person is sure a piece of work. You know, to define somebody. And, and, and so, when you, you, you hear that, and, and, and somebody says, they're, they're really saying, man, that person is really out there. <laughs> it's like, they have busted the norm. They're not like anybody else. They're, they're so different. And what you're going to find is, that phrase that we use could be used to define Peter. Peter was a piece of work in, in, in multitudes of different ways. Because what you find is you us, usually use this expression for people who are kind of over the top. They do stuff that sometimes you just think, you've got to be kidding me. Why in the world, why in the world would they do that. I just don't understand how that person could do that. And sometimes you're going to find, as you go through talking about Peter, there are sometimes you're going to think, how in the world could he do that? What made him say that? What made him act like that? What made him do that in that situation? And, and so sometimes you, you're going to begin to, to really look and say, okay, and so we're going to show you some things tonight uh, in the next 45 minutes to an hour, uh, maybe an hour and a half, something like that, ever, about, ever how much time I get to, to kind of show you some things really cool about Peter. Pastor Chuck, um, may I get me any pen to take notes with? Yeah, the yeah, they're, they're there. So, when you find out you, you look at this, and first of all, it says, he's Simon, whom he also called Peter. And, and he starts to describe, he says, he has a brother, Andrew. And, and you, you think about that for a minute, and you think, what? Why? I mean, okay, he's Peter, but yet you're, 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 you're using an expression that he's the brother of Andrew. And you think, okay, so what? He's the brother of Andrew. What you're going to find out is Peter and Andrew are brothers, but they're like night and day. Their personalities are absolutely, if, if, if you want polar opposites, they are polar opposites. And you're going to find certain things out about this. Okay? Here you need to understand something. When you go through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, in the four Gospels, you are going to find one individual who is intertwined in every one of those four Gospels. His name is mentioned more than anybody else's. And you'll begin to find, some, sometimes, you'll only find one other name in the four Gospels that is mentioned more than Peter. And his name is Jesus. Jesus is mentioned more than, than Peter in those four Gospels. But Peter is running a close second when, when you begin to start seeing, okay? You're also going to find that when you start going through these Gospels 
and you start looking to see who's, when, when the Lord says something or when the disciples say something, you're going to find there's one person that's going to come right back and say more than any of the other apostles. And you'll find that's Peter. He's there and, and, and he's constantly going. Okay? You're also going to find out that when Jesus is speaking in those four um, Gospels, there is one disciple that Jesus speaks more to than any of the others. It's like, why are you always speaking to Peter? Why is Peter always the one speaking? Why is Peter's name mentioned more than any of the other ones that are there? Okay? Now, sometimes you're going to find that when Jesus is speaking to Peter, there are times that he is praising him. You got it, Peter. You understand it, Peter. That's good, Peter. And then you're going to find some other times where he's going to say to Peter, you missed it. You didn't understand a word I just said to you. Why didn't you get what I just said? Why didn't you understand? There were some times that he, re if you remember, he rebuked Peter. He told him, you're going to deny me. Oh, no, not me, Lord. You are going to deny me. I know what I'm talking about, Peter. You can stand up all you want to in front of all these people and tell me that you're not going to do this, but Peter, you're going to deny me. You can say you'll die for me, Peter. You're going to deny me. He knew. And, 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 and so sometimes you'll, you'll be, begin to see that. Okay? You're also going to find that there was no other disciple who boldly confessed the Lord more than Peter. Peter was out there. And he would do that. And that's why Peter would always say, I, I'm not going to do this. Don't you understand? I've been, I've been out front more than anybody else, Lord, in these three years. And now you're going to tell me that I'm going to deny you? Hey, I've been out front. I've always been there, Lord. What makes it any different tonight than any other time? When they came against us, I was out front. I was the bold one speaking up and, and everything. Okay? But you will also find that nobody interrupted Christ more than Peter. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I really don't think I would want to interrupt Jesus when he's speaking. It's like, you know, when Charles Schwab speaks, you listen. I, I think there's a time to shut up. And when the Lord's speaking, I think that probably might be a good time. But Peter didn't understand that. Have you ever been in a conversation with somebody and they just totally want to interrupt everything you say? It's like, you know, I, 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 I want to, um, I'm telling you a story. I can't even get a word out. Well, no, it, what, it didn't happen like that. I was with you. Let me, let me tell the story. It's like, really? Whose story is this? Mine or yours? <laughs> you know, who, who, who's talking? Well, Peter, Jesus is speaking sometimes, and Peter, Peter just interrupts him. He also, he interfered with the Lord. And sometimes you need to understand that Peter also tempted the Lord. As you begin to look through the writings of, of Peter. But even with all of that, 
Jesus spoke more words of praise for Peter, more words of approval for Peter. And even he blessed Peter. Think about it. They're out there on the, on the sea. Jesus had died. He had rose. He had appeared to them. After Jesus appeared to them, Peter and those guys are in the upper room. They're, they're or in, the, in the house, locked up. Even after Jesus appeared, and all of a sudden Jesus says, we, or not Jesus, Peter. Peter says, hey guys, we've been locked up too long. I'm going fishing. Remember? And they all said, we'll go with you. There was a reason that they all said, we'll go with you. Peter's out there. They're out there. They've been fishing their best fishing hole all night long. And somebody's on the shore. Hey, fellas, caught anything? Because they were getting ready to come back in. And it's like they did not recognize that it was Jesus. You think about it. Jesus had been with them for three years. I think they should have known his voice, don't you? But there was something different after his resurrection that they didn't. Stink of bugs. I get my zapper out. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. As Paul Harvey would say, and now for the rest of the story. Remember? Jesus said, hey, guys, cast your net over on the other side. Really? <laughs> we've been fishing all night, and you want us to put it over there? You don't think we've already fished that side? And the Bible said, that all of a sudden, Peter went to draw in the net. And when Peter went to draw in the net, he's like thinking, okay, whatever. Let's just appease this guy. He began to draw in the net. The Bible says the net was so full that it began almost to break. I believe it said there was 172 fish why 172? Some people say that's a number. I don't, I don't really care. All I know is it's a bunch. You know, I think it was more than what uh, Dave caught. <laughs> Maybe it's <laughs> <laughs> But then all of a sudden, Peter realized oh, Lord. <laughs> Oh, 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 Lord. He started hauling to Jesus. He got out of the boat. They, they've got the fish in the boat. Peter is out of the boat. Okay, he ain't walking on water. He, 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 okay, at, at this time. But he said, hey, Lord, I'm coming. I'm coming. I know who that is. Because why? Peter recognized the voice in the storm. There's something familiar about that when, voice when you get in trouble. And he's telling you to do something. Remember when Peter says, Lord, if that's you, bid me to come. And he says, come on, Peter, get out of the boat. There's some similarity in that voice then that Peter now recognized. And remember when he got there, Jesus said, you want some fish? 
I got some on the fire. <laughs> and you think about it. One time you realize Jesus had never spoken to any other man the way he spoke to Peter. You don't find Jesus ever telling anybody else to get out of the boat and come to me. Nowhere in the scriptures is it ever recorded. But yet, in the same breath, there are times that Jesus said harder things to Peter than to any of his other disciples, okay? Unless it was Judas when he said, one of you is going to deny me. And, he, and Judas, is it I? He says, what you got to do, go do it quickly. Don't tarry. Let's get it over with. Because you know what you have, you have to do. Okay? So when you begin to start looking at, at what it says about Peter and all of these things, sometimes, again, I get my notes. It is, that is this, that when you find um, in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 2 to 4, Mark, chapter 3, verses 16 through 19, Acts chapter 1 and verse 13, in Luke chapter 6, verses 13 to 16, you will find the list of the disciples. Every one of those lists will have one name in the beginning. The others may be switched, but in every one of those lists, there is one name that always comes first. Guess who? Peter. Okay. Go to Ma go to Matthew um, uh, chapter ten. And I'll, I'll show you something. Okay. Matthew chapter 10 in verse number 2. These are the names of the 12 apostles. What's it say? First. Okay, but what, what does it say before Simon Peter? It, uh, you got the King James Version? It says first. Yours is King James first. King James first. The Holman. And what does it say? It says first. First. Simon, who is called Yep. Every one of them will say first. You want to know why? The Greek word there is a word called protos. P R O T O S, which is translated as first. Okay, first doesn't give it the correct meaning. It, it, it helps us to understand first, but it actually a better rendition or better interpretation would be leader. When he's called first there, he's using it in the context of he is the leader. Okay? He meant the first in rank. Okay? Jesus was the commander of the troops. Second in rank was Peter. And then the old rest of them fell in, in line. Remember, a couple of weeks ago, in um, the sermon, and it may have been in a teaching back here, remember what I told you about Peter?
Peter was the leader, but guess what Peter was to do? Remember? Church. Huh? Church. Yeah, they, they say he's first pope of the church, I think, St. Peter. But what Peter did was, remember on the day of Pentecost? Who came out of there preaching? Peter. Peter's job was to spread the gospel to the Jews and open the door the way for Paul to come in and now reach the Gentiles. So what you have is this bag of ragamuffins had a leader, Jesus. But when Jesus died, he passed the mantle over to first Simon, who is called Peter. And so he began to, to show because in the life of Peter, Peter had to be taught how to be a leader. Remember? Jesus would go off somewhere. And who would he take? Peter, James, and John. You will always find Always, I, I don't think there's any exception to, to this statement. There may be, but I don't think so. You will always find, if he gives three, Peter, James, John. Twelve, Peter. He always giving the first in rank, the leader. It was, it was not coincidental that the words of God. This is why I say sometimes, it, sometimes people say, oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, it does matter. It does matter in the order in which these appear because Peter was the leader. And when they recorded this, they, even if it was Matthew, John Mark, Luke, or, or uh, and John. It doesn't matter who was writing. They always understood Peter comes first. He's the leader. And, and so sometimes we, we don't we don't understand some things. Okay? Now, one thing that some people don't understand uh, uh, about leadership, okay, and, and that is there are times, and this is what Jesus was trying to teach Peter, there are times that you've got to give up yourself in order to get up, to go up. Remember what Jesus asked Peter this question. Peter, you've been out there talking to people. You've got your ear to the ground. You've been listening to them. And Peter, who do they say that I am? And what did Peter say? Some say that you're Moses. Some say that you're even Elijah. Come back. Or some say that you're even John the Baptist. And Jesus said, well, Peter, what about you? Who do you say that I am? And he says, oh, <laughs> you're Jesus, the son of the living God. Remember what he said, flesh and blood? 
have not revealed this unto you, Peter. But the Holy Spirit, Peter had to give up in order to go up. Peter had teaching of the synagogue. Peter was part of the Jewish movement. He had to give it up in order to go up. And there are some times to be a leader, to learn, you got to give up in order to move forward. And this is what Paul, or this is what Jesus was trying to teach Peter all along. Peter, you've got to be changed. Remember what Andrew, Andrew was the one that led Peter to the Lord. Remember what he said to Peter? He says, come here, Peter. Remember this, this Messiah that we've been looking for? I found him. I, I need you to come meet him. And Andrew brought Peter, or Simon, Simon, to Jesus. And he gave up his Jewish heritage in order to come into the kingdom of God. And, and, and the leader, you know, was there. Okay. Now, one thing was... In order to be a, a, a good leader, there, there's got to be some self-consciousness in here, okay? So look at what he, Peter had to do, okay? How, um, how, how do I lead you into this question? <laughs> to give me the wrong answer. Yeah. <laughs> You're good at that. You're good at that. What makes you who you are? Hmm? Okay. What makes you who you are? You all agree life experiences? Hmm? Mm -hmm. What defines your life? Um, can I pick on you? Huh? What makes you talk so much? What makes me talk so much? I want to learn. I have questions, so I want to learn. Did you get to talk much when you were a kid? Okay. A lot of times, most of us will say, I, I am who I am based upon my experiences in life. Right? I, I mean, honestly, you go talk to somebody and, and they'll say, well, I'm, I'm this because this molded me this way. Okay? Can I tell you that's wrong? That's what Satan wants us to believe. But in reality, who molds us? <laughs> no. Who makes, who molds us? God does. What did he say? I knew you even before the foundations of the world. I know every bone in your body. I know every muscle. I know your thoughts. I know you're laying, you're laying down at night. You're getting up in the morning. I know you. So really, what really defines who we are is God's will. 
Think about it. When God created you, what did he create you for? His purpose. Every one of us, every person ever made, ever made, was created for one thing. It was the perfect will of God that every one be saved. Right? But if we choose not to, what have we done? Huh? Yeah. Broke them all. <laughs> Broke them all. We have deliberately chose to go against the will of God. That God, I am not going to be who you wanted me to be. I'm going to be who I want to be. So that we, like, sometimes you say we broke the relationship There are times that Peter had to learn this. Even though Peter was called by Jesus, chosen as the leader, Lord, I won't deny you. Lord, I will fight to the end. That's Peter. What did God do? No, Peter, you've got to understand, my will is for you, Peter, to be the leader. A leader that is bold and strong. Remember, remember this, okay? Does God allow tests to see you fail? No. no. God allows tests to do what? To draw, you closer to, him. to draw you closer to Him, to make you stronger, to prove to Satan, I am in control. What did Jesus say to Peter? He told Peter, He says, Peter, Satan has decided, ha has requested to sift you like the wheat. But Peter, I am praying for you. Not only you, Peter, I'm praying for all of these others that are following. All these others that are going to follow. And I'm praying, Peter, that they become one. That you become one. Like I and the Father are one. So what God is praying is that we lose our self-consciousness of who we are in order to understand His will in our life to be who He wants us to be. Peter had to understand that. But when he did, look at what he did. There was one other time, do you remember when... Um, the Lord spoke to Peter and told him, I want you to go over here and speak to these people. And Peter says, they're unclean. <laughs> I'm not going to those people. And, and, the Lord, and the Lord said to Peter, did I make anything unclean? I don't think so. I think everything that I made, I stepped back and looked at it on that day and said, this is good. He didn't say, that's a pig. <laughs> That's bad. That's unclean. He says, no, I didn't do it. So what did Peter do? He had to lose his self in order to do what it was. And so what happened? Peter goes to get up, crucified. And he says, don't you even dare put me in the same position as my Lord and Savior. I don't even qualify there. If you're going to crucify me, hang me upside down. I don't belong like him. Okay? So, um, 
when you begin to look, uh, go, go to 1 Peter chapter 5, um, verses 6 through 7. Upon him because he cares about you. That what? He would what? I'm sorry, the first part of it was? Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God so that he may exalt you in due time. Yeah. Humble yourself before the Lord so that he will what? Exalt you. Exalt you when? Hmm. So if we learn how to humble ourselves before the Lord, He will exalt us. When He's ready. When He's ready. <laughs> That's what I got out of it. <laughs> you think about it for a minute. How would you like to have the Lord Himself lift you up. That makes me chill. There's only one requirement. Humility. Humble yourselves. <coughs> Humble yourselves. And the Lord will exalt you in due time. Peter, Peter learned that. There are some times, let me say this. There are some times you need to be careful when you tell somebody, I got this. Really? <laughs> really? No, I don't, I don't have this. I haven't got this. He's got it. Amen. And in learning that he's got it, you know what I've learned? If he's got the situation, he's got me covered. There is no time that he's going to cover the situation and leave you out there by yourself. Amen. This is why he made us the promise, I will never leave you nor desert you. I will be with you always, even until the end of the age, the end of the world, the end of time. There's not one time that I'm going to leave you by yourself. And sometimes that's hard to learn. We studied this morning in Sunday school about fears that we have. Mm -hmm. And it reminded us of the same scriptures you've just been quoting, mm -hmm. that with God we, there are no fears. Because no matter what situation you're mm -hmm. in, He's there with you. Yeah. It's like... He says, why, why are you afraid? I, I, I mean, honestly. Because we're here. But let me ask you this question. Have you ever been in, in a thunderstorm when you look up and lightning is going every which direction? Do you ever realize 
God told that lightning to go that way, and that one to go that way, and that one to go that way. I need you to last five seconds. I need you to last 10. I need you to do that. God is in control of every one of those lightning bolts. He's in control of every raindrop that's fallen. Every one of them. They cannot fall unless he permits it. And let me say this, if God can control the raindrops and the clouds and the lightning and the thunder, I think he can control our issues. Don't you? I think he's got it. And that's what Peter was having to learn. When Peter came out of there that day on the day of Pentecost, he was not concerned about one issue at all. I don't see anywhere in the Bible that Peter just, do we really want to go outside, guys? There are a bunch of people out there and we've been held up in this room and we, it's, been, it's been pretty safe. We haven't died yet. I don't think anybody knows we're here. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit comes on them and they could care less who knew they were there. You talk about hitting the floor running. I don't know how many stairs there were down from that second floor because they were in the upper room. But I think if Peter could jump <laughs> the first Spider-Man. <laughs> but sometimes we, we, don't, we don't realize this. Okay, now, here's the other thing, okay? And sometimes, sometimes we fault Peter for this, but in actuality it was not a bad thing, and that was Peter was self-confident. Okay? Think about it for a minute. If you know that outside that door there is danger, and you say, well, Pastor Chuck, you're the leader. Why don't you go first? And if I say, you know, I'm not so sure about that. I, I don't know. Or if I was to say, okay, let's go. God will, God will take care of us. It'll be all right. If I'm showing confidence, it's easier to follow that leader. And Peter had to learn that, hold on a minute, I can't be timid in the situation. There are some times that people will say, why do you do the things that you do? Why? Because I honestly believe God's going to do it. I could say, I'm not too sure about this. And you're going to say, okay, neither am I. It's not a boastful pride. It, it, it is the faith to understand that, yes, God, I heard you. I heard you. And I know that you are not taking me somewhere that I should not be going. You're not going to put me out there to let me be slaughtered. You will protect me. They may take my life, but they can't take my soul. That's his. That's not theirs. And, and, and so Paul, Paul began to understand this. Okay. But sometimes what happened was with Paul, or with Peter, I'm sorry, with Peter was his self-confidence a lot of times tripped him up. As you saw when, not me. 
I'm pretty confident here, Lord. That also became part of his downfall, okay, in there. So, so when you look at uh, some amusing moments in, in the life of Peter, go to John chapter 13. Uh, 13, 6 through 10. I'm sorry. 13, 6 through 10. Yes, please. And so he came to Simon Peter and said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I do you do not realize now, but you shall understand hereafter. Peter said to him, Never shall you wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you are, have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He who has bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. Yeah. I think Peter missed the sermon. I didn't come to be served but rather to serve. I, I think he forgot that sermon. <laughs> when Jesus says, hey guys, uh, I'm going to wash your feet. And, and, and Peter, you think about it. Who did, the, who did the foot washing? Not washing. Who did the foot washing in the home? Which servant? There were multiple servants in that house. You had a butler, you had a cook, you had the wine tester, and then you had that foot washer. 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 Diana's not in here. I could slur my R's. <laughs> But the lowest person was the person when, a, when someone came into the house and they took off their shoes. That person was there to get the dirt and the grime off of their feet. So when they came in the house, they weren't tracking all of that stuff in. <laughs> Even though their floors were dirt. <laughs> My, my house is clean dirt. <laughs> so anyway, they would clean the feet, you know, because in, in all honesty, you think about it. They reclined at the table, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't know about y'all, but when I'm reclining at a table, eating with somebody, I do not want to smell their stinking feet. Right? Isn't that enough when they take their shoes off sometimes? And that's me, I know. That's why when I come to your house, my shoes stay yours on. I'll remember that. Yeah, I'll remind you. But you think about it. The Lord says, hey, Peter, I'm, I'm going to wash your feet. Oh, come on. I should be washing your feet. He says, Peter, you don't understand. If I don't wash you, you're not clean. He says, Lord, not just my feet, all of me. Cover every bit of me. That was one. Matthew 26, 33 to 35, you know it well. Even if everyone runs away because of you, I, I'm staying put. I will never, ever, 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 ever run away. I assure you, Jesus said to him, tomorrow, tonight, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Even if I have to die with you, Peter told him, I will never, 
ever deny you. We always criticize Peter. Read the rest of the story. The rest of the story says, and all the disciples said the same thing. Why did they all say the same thing? Huh? Follow the leader. Follow the leader. Absolutely. Even they recognized who the leader was. Even though he was absorbed with his self and everything else, they're following him. Um, John 18, 10, when Jesus was arrested. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Yep, Jesus is arrested. <laughs> Peter, <laughs> Peter says, I, I'm going to get you. And he missed. He, he was a bad swordsman. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I mean, honestly, if, if you're going to draw a sword, don't you think you better know what you're doing with it? Yeah. <laughs> but he was willing. Yeah. How, you, 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 do you under, Do you ever get the picture of how he cut that guy's ear off? I mean, honestly, do you ever think about it? How in the world did he ever cut that guy's ear off? He like slices No, he wasn't doing that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the guy just got in the way. He's, he's just swinging that thing. Peter didn't know what to do with the sword. He was not a soldier. <laughs> he was a fisherman. Give him a hook, and maybe he may have been able to hook that dude. <laughs> give him a sword. He has no clue what to do with that. I'm telling you. But this, this is what I'm saying. Some of these stories are so funny. They really are. That's why I'm saying the Bible sometimes, it, it, it's, it's serious, but it is hilarious. If you ever take and put it in pictures and just imagine for a minute, he's out there flailing. They're just sitting there probably looking at him and saying, he'll wear down in a minute. <laughs> it's like Cassius Clay, you know, fighting somebody and they're just beating the air. He said, I just, that's my rope of dope. You, you know, and I, I'll, what, what is it? I'll, 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 I'll float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, and if you mess with me, it's one, two, three. <laughs> You're out. Yeah, it's like, come on. But, but do you ever understand something about the story of Peter? He said, I, I'm not going to deny you. But yet he did. And then when Jesus is there and Peter's close by to where he could see Jesus and the cock crowed. Peter, or Jesus didn't say a word. Jesus knew exactly where Peter was. In that whole crowd Jesus knew where Peter was. And what does the Bible tell you? That Jesus turned and he looked at Peter with an eyes. When Peter caught the eyes of Jesus, the Bible said he began to weep bitterly and he ran away. Go with me, with me if you would, to John chapter 21. And we'll finish with this because here's what you need to learn. John chapter 21, uh, verses 15 through 19.
Yeah. Got it. Yeah, so Go for it. Dying, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yes, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved, because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he saith unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee, Jesus, saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. What did, <coughs> what did Peter learn? This is after Jesus had, had risen. Remember what I, what I told you um, last week, week before, when it says, Peter, do you love me? What did, what's he really saying? I think, I think it was in a sermon, wasn't it? They were all running together. No, but, but I know it's... Okay. Mm -mm. Trust. trust. Oh. Do you trust me? Peter, do you trust me? Think about this for a minute. Peter had denied the Lord. He ran away. And what is Jesus saying to him? Peter, do you trust me? Yes, Lord, you know I trust you. Okay, Peter, then I want you to go feed my lambs. You know what he's saying to Peter? Huh? Yeah, it's, it's do my will. But what's he saying to Peter? Peter, you told me that you would never leave me nor desert me. But Peter, you denied me three times. He didn't bring it up. He says, Peter, in these words, encapsulated in these words, when he says, Peter, do you love me? Do you trust me? And Peter says, yes, Lord, you know I trust you. He says, you know what? I have forgiven you of everything, and I trust you. Even though you cursed me. He didn't bring it up. He was forgiven. Not only was he forgiven, he is learning what it means to have compassion on people. Jesus was giving Peter a leadership lesson. Peter, if you're going to be the one to lead these people, you're going to have to understand there are times you're going to have to forgive. There are times, Peter, you're going to have to get off the ladder and have compassion to people. It can't be all about you, Peter. You got to learn to love people or trust them. Trust them. And Peter's learning this all through here. And, and so when you find when you find these things, OK, you, you also find there were places, of course, where there were discomfort in, in Peter's um, 
life. And I'll just give you these, okay? And you can go read them. Uh, Luke chapter 9, uh, verse 28 to 35. Uh, when he got out of the boat in, in Matthew uh, chapter 14, uh, 28 to 33. And then in Matthew 26, when he's outside the courtyard. What verse do you know? Uh, uh, Luke 9 is 28 to 35. Matthew was a 26, 69 to 75. So what do I have to learn in order to be a good leader? I, I got to learn it ain't about me. It's all about him. I've got to learn to give up myself in order to be able to do his will. That's what Peter taught us. And, and, and all, of, all of the things that happened in Peter's life and, and the things that we always talk about, God used every one of those as a moment to teach Peter, hey, I need you to be my will. I need you to be my will. And when you get in my will, Peter, I'll trust you. And will you trust me? There are so many times we got to get out of the boat. It's safe in the boat, even when the storms are going around. And Jesus said, you don't understand. I not only control the waves, I control the winds. I control the boat. I control the path that it's going to go. And when I tell you, you're going to get shipwrecked, but you ain't going to die. I know what I'm talking about. That's what God's telling us. Okay, so that was Peter. Next week, I think we do Andrew. Hello, this is Pastor Chuck Cotton from Calvary Baptist Church. First of all, I'd like to say thank you very much for taking the time out to either listen to our sermon or to watch it on video. We are grateful that you've actually taken the time and hope and pray that it has been a blessing to you as it was to us as we delivered it to our congregation. We ask if you have any questions whatsoever that you email us at Pastor Chuck at CalvaryBaptistMiddletown.org or you could come in and give us a phone call, if you would please, at area code 513-423-7251. I'd like to take this opportunity to also invite you to come to our church and visit us, if you would please. We actually have small groups on Sunday morning starting at 930 with our morning worship following at 1045. Prior to our morning um, small groups, we also provide donuts with coffee, um, milk, orange juice, a time for fellowship, get to know each other, have a good time before we actually break out into our small groups for Sunday. Our worship services are uplifting, they're fast moving, and everything in our service is just a fast pace. But we do take time every once in a while to slow down as we feel the Holy Spirit moving and we never want to hinder it in any way. We also have on Sunday evening, during the school year, we have Awana, and Awana starts with the Puggles, actually from age two all the way up through high school. And during that period of time, we also have a worship service. Both of these start at six o'clock and end at 7.30. Our Wednesday night, we have a Bible study, which starts at seven. We generally finish about 8.15. We would love for you to come and visit with us. Don't have to dress up. Just come as you are, because to us, it doesn't matter. You're, you're a child of God, a creation of His, and so to us, you're important to everything that we do. Our motto here is building the kingdom one life at a time, and we hope that we have a chance to visit with you, get to know you as you get to know us. So thank you, and may God bless you.